you know, people writing fake essays, I said, how do real people write fake essays? Yeah. Hi all, it's Silesh Ram, AsianCultureVulture.com. How are you doing? It's great to have your company. We're back on the film festival trail. It's our home film festival, the London Film Festival. It's coming up in October. We just met with a bunch of filmmakers whose films you're going to be hearing a lot about during the festival. So let's go and find out more. Tell us about the Shadow Scholars, Eloise, please. So the Shadow Scholars um, is the story of the multi-billion dollar industry in which graduates in Kenya are writing essays and doctorates and theses for students in the global north. So they are writing for other people? Absolutely. So our story really begins with Professor Patricia Kingori, right. who is an incredibly acclaimed sociologist from Oxford University in the UK. She travels back to Kenya, where she's actually from, and whilst doing so, manages to sort of get into the, world, the hidden and secret world of the Shadow Scholars. Wow. Well, how did you come across this story? Well, Patricia Kungori <laughs> essentially um, was researching the topic as part of a, you know, a larger body of work. Right. And when she said to me that, um, you know, people writing fake essays, I said, how do real people write fake essays? Yeah. And it kind of began the journey whereby I sort of was really intrigued to go and meet them. And did you... Uh... I, 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 you, do you know much about Kenya or the background? You know, well, yeah, so I think the thing is, is that I, our film, I think, really comes as a perfect storm of, you know, a post-colonial narrative in terms of the incredible education system that exists in Kenya, the fact that they um, all speak English and yeah, are taught English right, in schools, right. and then obviously the advent of, like, technology. So in the sort of t 2010s, particularly, there was a huge investment in the infrastructure of internet technology which surreptitiously have made them the sort of, uh, the, the, the sort of providers of essays and theses to people around the world. And, and then what were you, what, did you go out to Kenya to interview Yes, yeah, so how it began was that um, Professor Gigori and I decided that we'd go on a research trip just to understand a little bit more about what was happening there. Um, I think we were always really passionate about hearing from the people who were doing the work. Mm. And so we feel really fortunate. I think there's not been an, an instance before where this has been filmed and definitely not over a period of three years. We managed to sort of wow. film in the okay. UK, the US and Kenya because what we wanted to do was tell this really holistic story about the global phenomenon. And what was it like meeting these shadow scholars? I mean, did you build a kind of relationship? Were they happy to be on camera? Well, and absolutely. I mean, this, the relationship has been ongoing for quite right. a long time. And I think at the beginning, what was almost incredibly um, rewarding for us was when they told us that they'd researched us right. and that they had decided that they were willing to participate awesome. on the basis wow. of, you know, work that we'd okay. done previously. And then I think in the last three and a half years or so, it's been really a case of really maintaining and managing the trust of that relationship because they have a lot to lose in terms of their livelihood yeah, yeah, and obviously yeah, yeah. this isn't something that's been discussed openly before. I would say, as the sort of crackdowns have happened internationally in terms of legally, in the UK and um, specifically in Australia, there have been a number of bans that have taken place, which also sort of enabled and required us to work somewhat differently. And so. Right. In the final stages of the film, what we decided to do was to work with an incredible company called Tease Media, okay. and we used synthetic veiling oh. to essentially digitally um, create the faces of the contributors oh, who will be in the film. Wow, oh, God. wow. So it has a bit of like new technology. Uh, yeah, so I feel like that's wow. all like, you know, the threads all come together yeah. when we use that yeah. technique as and well. And how does it feel to bring it to London Film? Is it going to be off, like a world Yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be our world premiere wow. here, and we're like, so excited, like I'm yeah. born and bred Londoner, so I couldn't be more pleased to do it on home turf. But I think they have such a history of like incredible calibre of film. I've always been a fan of the festival and really closely related to the support of the BFI. And so, yeah, I mean, couldn't be happier. And how did you come to be a filmmaker? We've got so few, so few <laughs> black and brown faces behind the camera. So, you know, tell us about that journey. Um, I think. Well, essentially, it really started with me saying that I was, you know, watching the documentaries of people like Kim Longinotto, um, sort of historically. And when I realized, you know, on the basis of a teacher actually saying, it's really competitive, you should probably try something else. Right, right. I thought, well, you know, someone's got to try and so that should be me. And I think I've always been incredibly dedicated and interested in the sort of way in which we can, you know, ch shift narratives and the capacity for real social impact right. through storytelling. Right. 
And then how, how, did, how was funding and all that? How did you... So we've had like incredible partners from the very beginning. Um, we worked with Build a Vision, um, who have supported like a number of incredible films. Uh, we worked with BFI Doc Society, of course, and uh, Film Four also on board. And we've also had like the incredible support of sort of further sponsors from around like the community. So Kaplan, who work in the education sector, um, and yeah i think to be honest we couldn't have really been happier with the people who came on board to help us bring this out and um, what do you think uh, people will get from watching the film i know there'll be a range of reactions <laughs> and stuff but what would you like them to kind of think about yeah i think watching the film i think you know i as uh, you know globally we've all really invested in education as an opportunity for meritocracy and equality i'd really love this to be a starting point for a conversation about perhaps the unequal valuation of education. Um, I'd also really love to question, you know, maybe who are in the shadows. When we talk about the scholars being in the shadows, perhaps it's the people yeah. who are sort of getting degrees without having done yeah. um, the work yeah. themselves. So yeah, lots of sort of hopes. But I think ultimately, I'd really love people to take away that this isn't a story about sort of pitting Africa or, you know, people from the global yeah. majority. This is really about being able to recognize and celebrate totally unrecognized talent that exists and seeing whether or not, yeah. you know, seeing the ways in which they have been the architects in this informal yeah. industry wow. of their own sort of liberation through education. Well,